Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts in your believing. Amen. During our midweek Advent services this year, we will probe, study, and explore the Advent or appearing of Jesus Christ in the book of Daniel. For the last number of years, our midweek Advent services have drawn on the promises of God concerning his Advent, his appearing in our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh through the prophets Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah. But last year, in 2020, this custom was interrupted due to the COVID-19 lockdowns. And I chose at that time to focus our attention on how we could make Advent a little more significant in our lockdown life in our homes. So the one remaining prophet from the four major prophets that we did not cover is the prophet Daniel, whose name means God is my judge, or God is judging. In 586 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army conquered Jerusalem, destroyed the city, and the temple that Solomon had built. Many Israelites suffered and died in this attack, while others were taken away into Babylonian captivity. Among the exiles were the young men Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. King Nebuchadnezzar had commanded that the young men be instructed in the Chaldean or Babylonian language and also their literature. He also instructed the chief eunuch to feed the young men food from the king's table. And after they had done this, they would be allowed to stand in his court and before his throne. In order to give the men a new identity, the chief eunuch had given them new names. Daniel was renamed Belteshazzar. Hananiah was called Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, and Azariah was known as Abednego. Despite all these changes, these God-fearing men tenaciously clung to their faith in the one eternal God. They did not defile themselves by worshiping false and foreign gods, nor defiling themselves with eating food from the king's table. In fact, they essentially ate an ascetic diet. They asked the chief eunuch to be fed with vegetables and water, and the chief eunuch permitted this. In the midst of all this upheaval, the Lord granted them wisdom, especially to the prophet Daniel. He was given the gift of insight and the interpretation of dreams just like the patriarch Joseph in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. Daniel persevered in his faith in the one eternal God, and he trusted in his power to help and preserve him through this time in exile in Babylon. The Lord blessed Daniel as he surpassed all the Chaldean scholars, astrologers, and sorcerers in his wisdom, and he was eventually made a confidant to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Presumably, Daniel and his three comrades lived into a ripe old age, since later on in the book, he was called upon to interpret the handwriting on the wall under King Belshazzar. Later on, he was betrayed under King Darius and cast into the den of lions. And according to chapter 1 and the tradition, Daniel lived until the time of King Cyrus who esteemed Daniel and his three comrades. King Cyrus, if you recall, was foretold by Isaiah the prophet in chapter 45 of his prophecy. And King Cyrus sent forth a decree. He gave freedom to the Israelites from their Babylonian captivity. And he commissioned that they return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple that had been destroyed. Despite their old age, Daniel and his three allies returned, never returned to the promised land in Israel. They died in Babylonian captivity. According to the testimony of St. Cyril of Alexandria, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah 
were beheaded under the orders of the Persian emperor Cambyses, who was the son of King Cyrus. In this way, the book of Daniel covers a very long period of history during the Babylonian exile, the 70 years. And Daniel and his book was written by Daniel himself during this time in exile. The overarching theme to Daniel is the sovereignty of the eternal God over all the nations. Since the Lord God directs and uses the events of history to fulfill his purpose and plans for all peoples of the earth. The comfort and blessing of God are given to those who cease their false worship of false gods and idols. Those who turn to the one true living God in repentance and have faith in the promised Messiah to come, to appear, and that is Jesus. Daniel reminds us that the Lord keeps his promises. He is gracious and merciful to those who are oppressed, especially those who were in exile, and that his son Jesus the Messiah will appear, and he will rule and reign and establish his kingdom that will never fade away, it will never be destroyed like all the kingdoms of men that are destroyed. By Jesus' death on the cross for our sins, his glorious resurrection from the dead for our eternal life, Jesus, the promised Messiah, has established his kingdom forever and ever. And you, along with I, and everyone who trusts and believes in him and his power to save and heal eternally will live in that kingdom forever and ever. It will be a world without end. We would be remiss if we did not mention the apocalyptic or end time theme that runs throughout the book of Daniel. You see, the book of Daniel in the Old Testament is like the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Like the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel is written in a style that includes strange dreams and visions, unusual symbols and imagery, number symbolism, and of course, a great interest on the close of the age, the end of time as we know it. Although it is impossible to determine the exact meaning, the exact interpretation of all these images, we nevertheless embrace the divine words of the prophet Daniel with sober and eager anticipation as pilgrims here on earth awaiting this eternal kingdom that has been established through the appearing of Jesus the Messiah and his death and resurrection we trust in that has established that kingdom for us and our salvation. Now having said that, the book of Daniel is not exclusively about the second advent of Jesus at the end of time in all his power and glory. In addition, there are images and promises about Christ's first advent in humiliation, a foreshadowing of his conception and birth of the Virgin Mary at the Annunciation and at Christmas. And since Advent is the time of year, we tend to focus on the threefold advent or coming of Jesus at the end of time in humiliation and sacramentally, we will focus on the sections of Daniel to prepare ourselves for the advent of Jesus in this Advent season. In fact, for the first two Sundays in the season of Advent, these Sundays tend to focus on the second Advent of Jesus, whereas the two last Sundays in the season of Advent focus on the humiliation of Jesus in his first Advent, his first appearing by the way of the Virgin Mary. In order for us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I encourage you to read through the book of Daniel twice during this Advent season. I say twice because I'm going to do something unorthodox in our study of Daniel the prophet during these Advent days. Rather than start at the very beginning of the book of Daniel, I'm going to start near the end of the book of Daniel, since the end of the book focuses on Jesus' second advent, and also the middle of the book also focuses on the second advent of Jesus. 
But the first advent of Jesus in humiliation when he was conceived and born of the Virgin Mary is hidden within the chapters at the beginning of the book. And since the season of Advent begins with its focus on the second advent of Jesus, working toward his first advent in humiliation by the way of the Virgin Mary, we will follow this same liturgical pattern. Hence, we will start at the end of the book, focusing on Jesus' second coming, working our way to the beginning of the book, which focuses on the first appearing of Jesus through the Virgin Mary. Whether it is the second advent of Jesus, the first advent of Jesus, his sacramental advent in word and sacraments, let us keep in mind that Jesus appears to us in this threefold manner in order to save us, to heal us eternally by his death and resurrection. This is why Jesus appeared. His first advent was to appear as the God-man Jesus to suffer and die on the cross outside of the walls of Jerusalem for our sins and the sin of the world. Three days after, he rose again from the dead, never to die again, so that all who are baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection and believe on his name will arise in their bodies, never to die again, when he comes again in all power and all glory at the end of time on the last day. But in the interim, between the first advent of Jesus and the second advent of Jesus, Jesus appears to us in an ongoing way, sacramentally. He preaches the word of God to us, which creates, sustains, and upholds our faith in Jesus. He unites us to himself in holy baptism, connecting us to his death, burial, and resurrection. And he feeds us his holy body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Here our Lord Christ Jesus gives himself to us. He bestows his eternal gifts upon us, the gifts of life, forgiveness, and salvation that he won and achieved through his death and resurrection. So, my treasured friends in Jesus, let us ponder anew the advent of Jesus, the appearing of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, awaiting his coming again, in all glory and power at the end of time, anticipating his coming to us in the world through the Blessed Virgin Mary and receiving him sacramentally in his word and sacraments that gives and bestows the gifts of life, forgiveness, and eternal salvation so that we may be brought into his kingdom that shall have absolutely no end. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and lives through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.